everybody, Karen Roby and Veronica Combs here for Tech Republic. And as we head into 2020, you know, we like to look back, uh, Veronica, and the things that uh, technology, some of the great things that we've seen and some things that haven't worked. Um, specifically, smart cities is what you've been walk, uh, talking about, uh, smart city projects and some good, some bad. What did yes, you find? Yes, well, <clears throat> apparently Amsterdam over in the Netherlands was the first smart city, big smart city project, and they started collecting data and it set the standards some, for some other cities. And mm -hmm. the Bloomberg Foundation has been very interested in smart cities work, and they actually came up with a, a scorecard. You get a, like an official stamp of being a smart <laughs> city for how you use data. So they actually, uh, they've awarded um, certifications to about 10 cities, including Louisville, Kentucky. Oh. They're looking for cities that are using data in smart ways to improve quality of life, to be more efficient, to improve safety. And so Louisville was, has been using um, Waze data mm -hmm. um, to make traffic studies cheaper. So instead of paying a lot of money and having it be all retrospective, they can use Waze data. They built this platform and it incorporates crash reports from police officers and also Waze data to um, do these faster traffic studies. So if you, oh. there's a particularly bad intersection, they can fix it hopefully more quickly. Yeah. And they also, um, they took this and they put it um, up on the web. It's open source. So now cities around the world can use it to do the same thing in their cities. So they got a, a gold certification for that, that work. Huh. Um, Washington, D.C. was another winner mm -hmm. in um, the smart cities work. They now, um, when someone calls into 911, they might have a health problem, but it might be more like the flu and not a broken leg. Mm -hmm. So now they have a way to triage those calls. And so if it's really an emergency, they'll send an uh, uh, ambulance. But if it's just, I'm not feeling well, then they actually have a nurse who can sign someone up for an appointment and can send an Uber to pick this person up and take them to the urgent care. Wow. So it's saving That's... money, getting the person to the right care, because obviously it's expensive to go to the ER, mm -hmm. especially if you don't have insurance. Um, so they also won for that work. So those were two success stories in smart cities work over the over the last ten years. Wow! And you know what's interesting is it's not just limited to the big what you think of as tech cities or the biggest cities. I mean, Louisville's a mid-sized city, but mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. you know um, not San Francisco. So interesting to see the different sizes. What about what didn't work? So it's funny that you know you don't if there's a narrow goal like. Mm -hmm. 911 calls or traffic studies, that seemed to be a key to success. But if it were broader and sort of sprawly, then um, I think a lot of those, the analysts that I talked to said that they just kind of, those projects kind of faded away. Like mm -hmm. it was a pilot project and it was small and there was no owner or it didn't work out the way they thought or it was too expensive. It just kind of faded away. So um, what they, what these researchers were saying was that you really have to have goals, specific goals, mm -hmm. and you actually have to ask people what they think. Because if there's a new camera that's maybe doing some surveillance, people want to know about it. And that's actually what killed, um, well, it didn't kill it, but um, Alphabet, Google's mm -hmm. parent company, had this big project in Toronto, and they were going to develop this waterfront um, land that was mostly vacant, and they were going to have free Wi-Fi and sensors and tracking, and it was going to be super efficient. But they sort of landed and said this is what we want to do and they didn't ask residents first and they didn't necessarily get the city involved as soon as possible so they had this big project announced in june and then by october there'd been enough sort of complaints and worries and concerns that they scaled it back down to a smaller version of the project so good um, to get the input from <laughs> yes yes and um idc had just did um, their 2020 predictions for smart cities and they were saying that before you even buy technology you need to think about what people would want, think mm -hmm. about privacy concerns, and have your policy written before you go buy things. <laughs> right, before you put the money out, yes, right, do, do those right. things. Uh, so. Well, so much, of course, that we have on Tech Republic uh, related to smart cities. So as we look into 2020, make sure you check out Tech Republic for much more on that. Thanks for watching.